Sir, can we start the meeting? Uh, right now, only eight participants are there. All right, guys, we already wait for the five minutes. Now I'm going to start the session. Let me share my screen. Is my screen visible to you? It's a blank page. Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to start the session. So, guys, uh, first of all, I want to know, uh, do you know any interesting facts uh, about the brain? Anyone want to share his knowledge? Any interesting facts about the brain? Not an issue. All right. So, in a recent studies in uh, psychology and neuroscience, I revealed a lot of interesting facts about the brain. Okay. So nowadays we have uh, no. I take uh, technology. Earlier, we don't have you know have technology like this to you know study the brain okay. because brain is uh, you know Nowadays, we have a lot of technology to, you know, uh, study the brain. Uh, technology paved the way for understanding how brain works, enable researchers to understand and see inside the brain, okay? With the help of a lot of uh, innovative technology, nowadays, we can actually research and understand the brain functions more efficiently than the previous one. Brain scanner developed brain imaging technology like uh, MRI, magnetic listening images, PET, EEG. So a lot of uh, new age technologies there. Okay, so this is a famous saying by the 
a doctor, neurosurgeon. You have two brains, a left brain and a right. Modern brain scientists now know that your left brain is your verbal and rational brain. It thinks seriously and reduces its thoughts to the number. Letters and words, your right brain is your non-verbal and initiative brain. It thinks in patterns or pictures composed of whole thing and does not comprehend the reduction, either numbers, letters, or the words. So, you know, previously when um, scientists is researching on the brain, they think that, you know, left brain and right brain, they work separately. Okay, but uh, let us study show that, you know, they work as an entire unit, not separate, separate, okay, because they are connected, left brain as well as right brain. So, might be you are already aware of the left brain and right brain functions. Okay, so there are two cerebral hemispheres, left and the right. So, left hemisphere processes the things more in parts and sequentially. For example, a musician process music in the left hemisphere. Earlier, it was uh, thought that music is, you know, creative process, so might be it process in the right brain. But nowadays, studies show that musician process the music in their left hemisphere instead of right hemisphere. Let's see another research also. Music and arts have been considered right brain twins. But trained musicians use more left brain and Novice musician use more right brain. Okay, second facts. Higher level of mathematician, problem solvers, and the chess players actually have more right brain activity. But beginners use more left brain. So it was thought like, uh, you know, maths, uh, reasoning and thinking, these are these are the things that is connected with your left brain. But recent study show that, you know, mathematicians, chess players actually use their right brain more actively. Okay. And same persons like mathematician, you are a beginner person. So might be you are using your left brain more actively. Okay. So, left brain and the <coughs> sorry left and the right hemispheres okay so these are the you know bundle of nerves and the thymus connect the left and the right hemisphere so i already told you it is already connected work as a one unit not separate separate brain allow each side of the brain to exchange information more freely crossing the mind New research show that the early concept of left brain, right brain is outdated. Okay, so this is a new discovery. Earlier, people think that these two, you know, left and right brain work separately or they function separately. But re recent studies show that they are connected, they work as a one unit. Only thing is, few people have, you know, right dominant brain and few people have left dominant brain. So <clears throat> most of the exercise uh, that we are going to do is based on the Betty Edwards theory. So she's also a trainer, thinker, okay. And she wrote a book as well, drawing on the right side of the brain. Okay, so Betty Edward uh, has used the term L mode and R mode to designate the two way of knowing and the same. Think like uh, this brain have two gears. Okay, most of the time we are using only one single gear. Okay, so Betty Edward, uh, according to her, we have L mode and R mode. The verbal analytical mode and the visual perceptual mode. 
no matter where they are located in the individual brain you are probably aware of these different characteristics okay so l mode that is labrin the verbal analytical mode that is your verbal mode analytical mode for speech language okay that is connected with this l mode and it have a step by step style of thinking using words numbers other symbols strings things out sequentially like words in a sentence so let's see the r mode the right brain it is a visual perceptual mode use visual information and the process all at once like recognizing the face of your friend okay instead of uh, thinking step by step your right brain thinks all at once okay so l mode is step by step style of thinking using words numbers and other symbols l mode strings thinking out a sequence like words in a sentence okay so might be you are already aware of this functions okay so just i am going to show you the diagram the left brain and the right brain so see in left brain these are the things a lot of things are there like the grammar body senses synopsis okay your motor skill your emotional memories okay you see so these things are associated with the left brain okay and this is your right brain okay so vision music memory motor skills art with the brain and the mind the arts complex mind and brain processes okay so as we already know that uh, you know creativity all this thing is related with the right brain okay on all, all the logic mathematics that it associated with the left brain so arts complex mind and brain processes the arts serves as a sketch pad for thinking okay so not only uh, just uh, drawing is important uh, for you know your career it is also important because if you are drawing you are already activating your right brain okay so ability to change as a brain develop okay suppose you do lot of brain exercises that will enhance your ability to change as a brain develop engages uh, visual perception okay that also enhance your eye and hand coordination foster creative expressions brain organize information based on the audio and visual inputs okay so what if information you are getting from outside either audio information someone is talking like i am talking to you or you are uh, visually seeing the this uh, presentation so these kind of impression in information your brain is organized okay and give its inputs strong links between audio and visual learning and reading and learning so there is a strong link between audio and visual perception okay so this is just how the brain look okay. there are different different lobes and different, different areas visual area audio area okay so now we are going to discover the lobes okay so frontal lobe that is uh, area around your forehead involved in purposeful acts like a judgment like a creativity problem solving and the planning okay 
that all turn in your frontal lobe okay area around your forehead the partial lobe top back area of your brain okay process higher sensory and language function okay like uh, now i am talking to you whatever i talk okay that analyze in your partial lobe temporal lobe left and right side above the above and around the ears okay so those are the area of your temporal lobes primarily responsible for hearing for the memory for the meaning and the languages some overlap in the functions of the lobes and there is a parietal lobe okay back of the brain primarily uh, responsible for the vision okay so these are the lobes in your brain so learning changes the brain some kind of stimulus to the brain start the learning process like now today we are going to do a lot of brain exercises okay these exercises uh, are like a stimulus to the brain the stimulus is sorted and processed at a several level the result is one mission of the memory either doing something we already know how to do or we are doing something new stimulation is doing something new lighting up the brain scan once a task is learned the brain light up less so now before we start the you know drawing exercises let's discuss about the music because music is also kind of art okay so let's uh, discuss about the music and the brain because you not only drawing music is also helpful in you know activating your brain okay so suppose you are you are able to play uh, you know any instrument okay then that is good for you you are actually activating your brain okay hearing is also uh, helpful okay only thing is you need to hear proper music like a mozart or something like that so the five senses how do we come to know the world the seeing the hearing and smelling the world okay everything we know about the world comes to us through our senses traditionally we were taught to have just five of them like a sight hearing touch smell and the taste okay so now we are talking about the music okay this is how it look okay that sound waves enter in your ear okay make your ear to vibrate okay the ear drum makes the bones vibrate then those bones make a fluid move and ear cells bend then the auditory nerves take the message to the brain this is how your ear works so let's discuss about the music and the brain the familiar music activities focus area okay that is your left hemisphere so actually when you are playing a music okay you are actually you know calculating lot of you know uh, major minor notes lot of things rhythm notes are activated in focus area and the cerebellar harmony activates the left side of the brain more than the right in the inferior temporal cortex okay so this is about the music composite listening left at right hemisphere both understanding ly lyrics is associated with the focus area okay so see like a simple music lot of 
you know brain areas are activated at the same time okay so music is processed differently for the different people depending on the kind of music and the musical background Okay, so music goes much deeper than that below the outer layers of the auditory and visual cortex to the limbic system, which <coughs> controls our emotion and the emotion generated there proceed a number of well psychological responses, sadness, for instance, at a medical cause of us, slow blood pressure to rise or drop in the skin, conductivity, and the rise in the temperature, fear increases. heart rates happiness make you breath faster okay so there are uh, emotional impact of music as well okay music modulates our body at the stress responses which can decrease or increase stress level yeah if you are listening a calm music that means it can decrease your stress level okay might be your hearing you know hard rock or music like that it might be your uh, stress level might be increase music is strong and powerful mood enhancer music strengthens our immune system and enhances wellness sounds connect us to our sympathetic and parasympathetic stress stress and responses nervous system so these are the brain waves okay so cycle per seconds brain wave brain wave activity these are the brain wave this is a delta brain wave okay 1 to 4 cycles per second okay so that is deep your deep sleep right theta that is 4 to 7 cycle per second that is uh, twilight zone half awake and half asleep alpha that is 4 to 12 cycle per seconds relax alertness reflection calm prepared then the beta 12 to 25 cycles per second like a busy classroom activity discussion this and that okay super beta no example is there so 25 cycles per second okay so like intensity drama exercise simulation okay so i am skipping uh, the the music part here because then it will take lot of time okay so this thing i want to show you so this is the brain activity by age stages of development through the sensory experiment in the first year so you can notice in the first month third month sixth month and the 12th month so how this uh, you know brain activity is increasing day by day and you can easily see that in a 12 month okay this brain is fully active Okay, as well as uh, we can also see the results of the scan. Okay, that is your uh, resting brain. I think someone's uh, mic is on. Okay, so this is the scan. Show the brain functions. Okay, these are the four different slices of the same brain. Mapping of cerebral function. Resting brain shows no hotspot, so you can see this is the resting brain. Okay, and you can't see any hotspot here. Okay, you can see the you know dark color like the green, most of that, and the blue. And here you can see the activity. Okay, some brain parts are becoming red or orange.
okay and this is the visual activity when we see something or we analyze some visual imagery so this is how our brain function the subject exposed to visual stimulation consists of both patterns and the colors increase activity in the stimulated brain pet images are added region of increased activity correspond to the primary visual cortex okay and this is okay this is visual activity let's compare to thinking activity okay suppose you are thinking about something okay increased activity in the stimulated brain okay region increased activity correspond to the frontal cortex so when you are something uh, thinking about something your uh, frontal cortex is more activated motor or kinetic activity motor stimulate of the brain subject to up up and down on this right foot okay so motor activity any kind of motor activity okay your brain is more shows more hot spot okay so so neurons you are already aware of the neurons neurons brain cells makes a connection between the different part of the brain 100 billion neurons in the human brain information is carried inside the neuron by electrical pulses and transmitted across the septic gap from one neurons to the another by chemical called the neurotransmitter learning is the critical function of neurons as well Dendritic branching helps make connection between the cells. As cell connect with other cells, synapses occur. New synapses are appear after learning. So we can clearly see this. Okay. This is septic connectivity of a five-day baby. Okay. This is septic connectivity of a six-year boy or girl. And this is septic connectivity of an adult. So when uh, we are you know, uh, at the age of you know 3 to 7 okay this function okay and your speech or you can say the vocal area it the frontal lobe control production of speech and sounds lies close to motor areas monkey's area left temporal lobe gets meaning from the words and sentences formulate ideas into speech okay so these are the different different scans okay that show the activity of the brain while we are seeing or while we are hearing something while we are speaking okay now Come to the left brain versus right brain. The function of language in the left hemisphere for the most people. Scientists discovered this by observing people with the brain injuries. Left hemisphere is actually dominant because speech and languages are related to thinking, reasoning, and higher mental functions. Your right brain. Scientists used to think that the right hemisphere was less evolved. It is connected to the left brain by thick nerve cable, the corpus callosum, which allows to communicate between the two. As I already told you, these two brains are already connected and work as a one unit. Each half of the brain works in a complementary fashion for the different modes of thinking. Okay, so our brain have two halves, the right and the left. People using left part of the brain are usually logical and analytical, while those who use the right half of the brain are more creative, innovative, and imaginative. 
okay do you want to know whether you are right or left brained that means uh, which brain is dominant okay so we'll do one test okay try this read aloud as quickly as possible the color in which the words are written but not the actual words okay so instead of uh, reading the color okay you need to read the words okay not the actual words so try this test Okay, so for example, instead of reading a green, you need to read orange, red, green, yellow, like that. Okay, while doing this, uh, you might feel the conflict between the two brains. Yeah, if you merely read the words, you are likely to be using the right brain, whereas if you read the colors, you are using your left brain. One more test, okay. Okay, so sit like this, okay. Put your one hand on another. Suppose your uh, left thumb is on top of the right thumb, okay. That means you are left brain dominant person. Okay, now try this. Try to sit like this, okay, in a cross leg big posture. Okay, suppose your right uh, foot uh, leg is on top of the left, or vice versa. That is how you can find out your which brain is dominant. Okay, so your left body parts, okay, left hand, left leg, that is operated by your right brain and all your right organs, your right hand, right legs, okay, that is operated by your left brain. Left brain versus right brain, I am pretty and he's analytical. Have you ever thought why some people can paint beautifully but have difficulty adding two plus two? Or why some people can understand the Intricate of the calculus effortlessly, but struggle to write a one page essay. It might be you, you also explain this kind of thing. It's all about which side of your brain is dominant the left or the right. The human brain is aggregate down the middle into two parts, particularly known as the left brain and the right brain, respectively. We know that different parts of the brain control different body and mental function. Over the years, the theories that has gained in the popularity in that the right brain and the left brain are responsible for different modes of thoughts and that the way which a person thinks will depend on which side of his brain is predominant. People who really more heavily on the right half of the, their brain tend to be more imaginative and initiative. They see things as a whole and are interested in patterns, shapes, and sizes. The right brain is associated with the artistic ability like the singing, painting, writing poetry, etc. Left brain dominates people may find their thought process oish and difficult to follow or they are quite opposite in a way they think. Left brain dominant people tend to be more logical and analytical in their thinking and usually excel the mathematics and 
core skills. But this does not mean that the person who is a left or right brain dominant does not use the other part of his brain. For most people, the two parts of the brain works in tandem to enable them to function as well-rounded personality. The right brain observes the new information in chunks, but it is the job of the left brain to shift and sort it in an organized fashion. However, there is no clear-cut definition of the function of the two parts of the brain. Each can do the other works, just not as efficiently. Most people have a tendency to learn towards using a left brain or a right brain while thinking or learning. For instance, right brain dominates people are often poor spellers as they tend to really more on their initiative rather than actually studying the order in which the letters in the words occurs. Academic thinking. At the time of their birth, babies are not predisposed to the either left brain or the right brain thinkers. Unfortunately, our education system, which its emphasis on you know, road learning and exam syllabus, is more turned to encouraging the left brain activities, often to the determine of the left brain creativity. School examinations are designed to test left brain activity and encourage conformity in the thoughts. There is a possibility that the right brain skills are not exercised, they may not develop sufficiently. When it comes to academia, left brain dominates the children to do well <coughs> at a school as they are more likely to respond to formulated learning they exhibit greater responsibility, are quite connected to the study by themselves and have a greater concentration. Right brain dominant children, on the other hand, are less likely to perform well academically. They prefer to study with the company, cannot sit still for a very long time and are more responsive in an informal setting. So left brain and right brain dominant peoples can also categorize as a disorientated convergent thinkers respectively. Okay, so these are the left brain inventory and right brain inventory. So verbal focusing on a words symbols, numbers, and little lead by the logic, process ideas sequentially step by step, words used to remember things, remember names rather than the faces, make logical detail collection from the information, work up the whole step by step, focusing on the details and information organized. So right brain inventory, visual focusing on image pattern. Initiative, lead by the feelings, process ideas, simultaneously, mind photo used to remember things, writing things down or illustrate them to help you remember. Make lateral connection from the information. See the whole first, then the details. Okay, so your left wing is highly organized, like making list or planning likely to follow rules without questioning them put at keeping track of time spelling and mathematical formulas easily memorized and enjoy observing okay and your right brain inventory organized tend to be lacking okay so your less organized might be uh, you can uh, compare two person one is left brain inquiry and right brain inquiry might be his uh, study table is might be messy compared to left brain inquiry person a free association like to know why you are doing something or why rules exist okay no sense of timing may have trouble with spelling and finding words to express yourself 
enjoy touching and feeling actual object sensory input instead of observing okay so left brain that is plan ahead likely to read instruction manual before trying anything listen what is being said rarely use gesture when talking likely to be believe <clears throat> you are not creative need to be willing to try and take risk to develop your potential right brain in with degree trouble processing so often late impulsive unlike to read instruction manual before trying listen to how something is being said talk with your hand that means use body gesture like you to think you are naturally creative but need to apply yourself to develop your potential okay so as we know that drawing is you know a very strong tool to enhance your right brain inventory okay so drawing is a global skill what is global skill other global skills are uh, reading driving learning to ride bicycle etc okay drawing is also a global skill that anyone can learn learning to draw follow the same process just as once you had to learn the alphabet and how a sentence was con constructed before you could learn to read with drawing if you learn the components a sexual skill of a drawing you will be able to draw perceived objects something you can see out there okay never found anyone completely unable to learn how to draw okay that is that is a saying from the john ruskin he is a artist from the 19th century okay so what is drawing drawing is a learnable skill anyone can learn to draw okay no age barrier nothing okay at any age any time you can learn to draw learn to see in a special way a special state of consciousness okay a path to creativity a risk becoming an artist will only work for you if you are willing to try do not concentrate or embrace about the early outcomes every mistake becomes something learn from the form and gets you closer to see like an artist so to want to learn a uh, drawing okay these are the perceptual skill of drawing what are the perceptual skill of drawing the perception of edges the perception of spaces the perception of relationship the perception of light and shadow and the perception of the cold so let's uh, see the all perception of drawing skill one by one the most basic skill what drawing does required is ability to switch from left brain or from the edward scal elmer to art Am I audible, guys? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So whatever uh, these thing be perceptual skill of drawing that we are going to discuss one by one. Okay. So first one is identifying the edges, recognize the spaces. Okay. Calculate proportions and angles. Judge from the shadow. Okay, an unconscious skill of putting it all together. Okay, the five skills of drawing are really about to learning to see. Okay, so three things I already told you: you need to establish your you know, brain and hand coordination. Okay, your eye, brain, and hand and coordination. there are destruction in the world consider this 3000 particles of information are 
bombarding your brain every second screaming for attention your brain is responding to physical sensation the itch in your wool sweater or your hot camp toes your falling blood sugar level fragments of dream you had last night the radio the tv the clicker your computer screen and that just uh, starters point is we all flooded with information every sentence instance of the day okay so first before we start uh, i want to discuss uh, few terminologies okay number one is picture play because when beginner start to learn to draw okay he is not aware of this terminology it's called the picture play okay what is picture plane the picture plane is imaginary vertical surface like a window okay through which you look at your subject this way you copy your three dimensional view of the world to your two dimensional surface on your drawing paper okay so see this is the example of picture plane okay this is the imaginary plane okay as a beginner student what you can do you can create Uh, your own picture play, okay, so that uh, you will get idea how this picture play works, okay, and that is also important for beginners. Like, uh, why this is important? Because see, whatever we see around us, we see it in a circle, okay, and when you start learning drawing, okay, you draw it on a rectangle or a square. for framing for observation okay you can use this tool it's called the picture plane view finder okay so what you can do you can create a frame like this okay from which you can observe your subject okay to create a you know view finder like this picture plane view finder Okay, you can observe from this viewfinder, and you can trace whatever you see from that viewfinder. Okay, might be interior or exterior. So you can create a big viewfinder or a small viewfinder. Okay, that is going to help for you for framing. Okay, so this is an example of small viewfinder. okay so you take a cardboard 10 by 8 okay construction paper or thin black cardboard anything will be okay okay just measure it okay and cut it down when you cut it down you'll get picture plan like this Okay, so in the beginning, uh, use a plastic sheet. Okay, just uh, you know, paste a plastic sheet in a transparent plastic sheet with the help of masking tape. Okay, and it will look like this. Okay, just divide this plastic sheet into two parts with the help of marker. okay and try to draw you know simple subjects like uh, your own hand okay try to trace your own hand or just observe interior or exterior like this okay any object like this or interior exterior or any subject okay and try with your own hand okay so first exercise try to draw your own hand with the help of picture plane or view finder okay later on you can try few objects or interior or exterior as well
okay after testing you can compare with your you know uh, paper drawing okay first of all just trace it later on just observe the distance okay same measurement okay same measurement you take it on a paper okay and try to draw your hand one more time these are the examples you can also use light and shadow all right so observe picture plane <clears throat> Okay, so let's discuss about the edges. Okay, this is the first skill, recognizing the edges. Okay, if you think the border between the two different parts of the picture, like the borders between the sky, sun, beach, plants. Okay, as edges, you slowly become aware of the different relationship between the parts within the picture. These are the edges. Okay, and what we call these edges? The contour lines or the outlines. Learning to, to draw contour lines can improve your observational skill and the great way to practice your drawing technique. Only lines are used when creating contour drawing, no shading. Okay, contour lines are these are the outlines, actual lines like a wrinkle, applied lines like the edge of a shadow or a highlight. These usually define where a surface curve or a bend and differences in a value and color. Okay, so this is the first skill. Try to observe any subject and try to draw. The contour or the edges. Okay, for this exercise, use only lines, no shading. Okay, are drawn slow and deliberately, not sketchy. Okay, draw slowly. Describe the contours of the shape or forms. Are good practice when you are beginning beginners or already a skill artist. So this is the first exercise for you guys. Okay, take any object, simple objects, and try to draw a contour drawing. Okay, without any light and shadow or a shading. Okay, for this exercise, your drawing supplies are 2D pencils or range of light and dark pencils, eraser. Okay, you can also use a fine type marker. Okay, first you try with the pencil, later on you can try the pen as well. That will boost your confidence. Okay, so this is your first exercise. Okay, take a new object and try to draw its outline. Okay, so next exercise is called the blind contour drawing. Okay, this is the exercise in C. Okay, filling your your way around the form. So, blind contour drawing. Contour drawing is creating precise precise line drawing by drawing the individual constructive parts of the form. Arrange the whole form. Blind means without looking at your paper while drawing with a total concentration on the subject. Are drawing. This problem is designed to improve your visual concentration. Okay, so for this exercise, instead of you know looking at the paper, you just simply observe whatever subject you choose. Okay, do not try to look at your paper. Okay, what you can do, uh, you just hide your pencil as well with the help of you know. Uh, uh, what 
you can say the paper plate okay just make a hole in a paper plate okay put it on your pencil so that uh, you are not able to see on the paper okay put any simple object in front of you like a bottle or a anything okay and try to draw it this is called the blind control drawing okay that will enhance your you know brain and hand coordination okay so try something blind control drawing as well okay you can try with the simple objects or you can draw your own hand as well okay the thing is don't try to look at your paper just observe your subject whatever subject is there okay and do not look on your paper that is the condition okay draw the subject without looking at the drawing paper you must resist the temptation to peek at your paper if you look once you will not be able to continue without looking again and again this type of drawing takes a great deal of concentration and a focus a good way to describe the blind control drawing process is that you are learning to see through the your sense of touch if you imagine that the point of your pencil is the edge of the edge of the subject you are drawing the same position where your eye are on the subject then move your eyes very slowly along with the contours of the subject and allow your pencil on the paper to see all the details that you your eyes see use continuous line do not take your pencil off the paper okay these are the instruction proceed carefully concentrate focus and draw the subject as if you are tracing or filling your way around the contours of the form keep the line glued but do not scribble move your pencil in a slow and steady pace much like a tracing Okay, so this is the second exercise. Choose any subject. Okay, and try to draw a blind control drawing. Follow both outside and inside contour. Inside contour are called cross contours. They follow from much like a string. Do it will wrap around the object and are the drawing. is not outline drawing and outline drawing define only two dimension length and width the blind contour drawing you are creating define three dimension length width and depth cross contour line is what defines the third dimension depth fill up the page draw the large don't be afraid if you are drawing runs of the paper in any way or all directions do not be concentrate about how you are drawing will look this is important exercise in seeing you will be drawing the objects as you see them not as you think you know them do not judge this drawing by the standards you usually use to access the drawing if you are carefully follow the guidelines about believe it or not you will find a great satisfaction in the present Can be so these are the few examples of light control drawing. Okay, take any object okay, and try to draw it without looking at paper. Okay, this is your next exercise. Yeah, you can try a person or any object. Ah, if we talk about the anti perspective, it's good. But hands, they can't. Ah, mute your mute your mic. हेलो प्रभाकर सर कैन यू म्यूट लियोन्स माइक एंड नीरज माइक सो दैट यू डोंट डिस्टर्ब आशीष सर
any other drawing exercise how this work you were supposed to be able to draw the perfect likeness or good likeness anyway of whatever you are drawing by never thinking your eyes of it it being whatever it is you were drawing that is by starting at your subject staring at your subject and never looking at your paper you were drawing on you were somehow supposed to draw a complete proportional to scale reproduction how often would this work like never and anyone did do a decent similarity you know they were cheating so for example for this pure control drawing you choose a you know close up subject like this like uh, this is a close up photograph of of the hand okay and as you can see there are lot of you know lines are there okay first of all try to observe this okay take a small piece of any detail version of any subject like this hand okay check this out this is a close up picture of the hand okay and you can see lot of details are there okay many many wrinkles lines are there okay even shadows are there okay folds are there okay also this and try to capture this contours okay so step number one just squint your eyes as you look in this picture okay you can try right now as well just squint your eyes okay so let me show you the beginning picture now you can squint your eyes and you will be able to see the you know darks and lights very very clearly when you squint your eyes you collapse the majority of details you might become aware of overall shape of the hand or it rest within your format okay okay also observe the negative space okay then open your eyes just a little and now you can start to see a next level of detail where you see some hash like a diagonal lines formed by the creases okay so first try to squint your eyes later on you just open your eyes okay see the detail and try to draw it all right so open your squinted eyes yet a little more and you might start noticing the little dotty area the motted areas where different amounts of blood flow within the skin this was caused by the pressure of the cinder and on the scanner glass okay so this is the next exercise choose any small subject for a close up shot and try to draw the contour lines okay so our next point is the negative space I think you are all aware of the negative and positive spaces. 
okay so these are the very famous saying okay, the expression to my way of thinking does not consist of the passion mirrored upon the human face for portrait by a violent gesture the whole arrangement of my picture is expressive the place occupied by the figures or objects the empty spaces around them the proportion everything plays a part so this is the famous scene by the henry matisse is a painter nothing is more real than the nothing you can never have a use of the inside of a cup without the outside the inside and the outside go together they are one okay so let's start about the positive and negative spaces so artists talk about the spaces in a two different ways a positive space and a negative space can you think of what the definition for the positive and negative space might be okay so negative space when compositing a piece of artwork we generally work with the three elements the frame the positive space and the negative space also called the void space the frame is the boundary size of your artwork the positive space is the your subject and the negative space is the empty space around your subject so like positive space is your subject like these are the bases these are the positive spaces okay so whatever that occupied by your subject is called the positive spaces so these bases are the positive spaces okay whatever area is remaining okay this white area you can you can also see okay this black this is a positive space and entire white area is a negative space Right. so negative space is the opposite of positive negative space is the space around the object on the left hand side of picture the negative space is the wide area around the borders so i think you are clear about the positive and negative space all right does this image show a positive or negative spaces Does this image show a positive and negative spaces? Yes, sir. Does this image show a positive and negative spaces? Yes, it does. What do you also in this image? Are you able to see the faces? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, and if you also in the middle, okay, this black portion, you can see the faces. So this is a famous uh, optical illusion. Or the waste spaces. Okay, one of our exercises is based on this waste spaces illusion. Okay, so we are now talking about the spaces. Draw an organic shape starting on the one side of the square and ending on the same side. 
so you can try this exercise okay just uh, try any shape just flip the paper okay and just cut it down okay like this you will get lot of patterns okay now i am going to show you how artists designers use a negative space okay this is a again famous illustration by the roman bar he is a israeli born illustrator based in london tackles politically charged issue with publications and with his subject range from iraq to corporate greed and his work appears regularly in the economist square wall paper the guardian he works by owning the negative spaces of the drawing so that it adds nonsense to the dominant subject he is uh, depicting the meaning of snaps to focus only after a split second so few examples i am going to show you Okay, by the different different artists. So here also you can see the use of negative and positive spaces. Okay, here you can see few human figures. Okay, this is one another example of a negative space. yeah just also how these different different artists use a negative space for the illustration or for a logo design for a photography in a painting the root of a will so Let's see how beautifully this artist uses a negative space. okay so these are the examples of negative space you know in a different different artistic aspect in a painting in a graphic design in a logo design
can see the map of Australia in this negative space. Okay, so next exercise is negative space drawing. A negative space drawing, instead of observing the positive space shape of an object, you need to draw a negative space. Okay, of a space around the object, this may include any background details or a pattern, or it may be drawn as a simple silhouette. Okay, not an issue. Okay, observe the shape from between different parts of Okay, so instead of observing the positive space, okay, just observe the negative space. So this is the second important skill, recognizing the non-object spaces. Okay, so all this white part, these are the negative space. Okay, this is your next exercise. Okay, try to observe your negative spaces and instead of drawing the positive contour, okay, instead of that, just feel these gaps, okay, and try to draw these negative spaces. Okay, so for this exercise, uh, take any subject like this chair, okay, any chair will do. Okay, for example, this kind of chair will also do. Okay, take any chair, okay, and just try to draw uh, spaces in between, that is negative spaces. Okay, any type of chair will do. Okay, that is your next exercise to draw negative spaces. Okay, you can try different trees or might be plants or any branch of plant. Okay, so instead of drawing a positive space, okay, try to draw a negative space. <clears throat> Okay, you can try simple objects like this, the chair. Okay, or might be some stationary item. Okay, just need to draw gaps in between. That is the negative space. You can try figure as well. All right, so this is your next exercise to draw negative space only. Okay, so next skill and the most difficult skill is to recognize the proportion, perspective and scale and the angles. Okay, in the chair example above, all those triangles and square that makes up the white space exists in a relationship to one another. Our job next is to figure out what is the relationship is. Okay, for example, here is the rural. Okay, now we are going to measure the proportions. What are the different different you know parts of this chair related with the this ruler? Okay, so here is the ruler. We are use it for a sighting. Here is out chair the ruler. Stuff, right. Set the picture. So for example, this is one inch. Okay, try to compare it. Okay, this is the height. And compare to this. Just look at the width. 
2n r unit divide this is 2n r unit divide this is one unit divide okay meanwhile you can measure each and every part of this chair okay the same proportion that we also use for you know you figure drawing as well for example seven and a half head or eight head okay and i think you are all aware of the perspective Okay, so next skill is the judging the light and dark. So I think you have a lighting and shading subjects. So you are also aware of this topic, lighting and shading. Okay, the highlight, the light, the shadow, the cast shadow. Okay, so only three minutes left. So I quickly assign you uh, exercises. Okay, for the brain exercise. Okay, so this is here is your first exercise. It's called the base face. Okay. So all you need to there are these you know uh, base face uh, illustrations. template that the, those are available on uh, google you can download these for your practice okay so here is a quick exercise designed to illustrate the mental conflict that can occur between the l mode and r mode this is a famous uh, optical illusion drawing called west faces because it can be seen as either two faces profile or as a symmetrical base in the center So for this exercise, what you need to do, okay, take this kind of uh, show you. Okay, if you are a uh, left right-handed, okay, and this is the template for the lefties. Okay. So right handers please use this side okay that means this face is facing the right direction and for left handed if anyone is left handed use this template okay the person is in profile in a left side all you need to do is for left handers okay draw a face and try to draw a symmetrical opposite side face okay same exercise for right handers okay you need to draw a symmetrical face from the opposite side okay and suppose if you are not able to draw this kind of face you can use any simple you can start with a uh, drawing like this okay draw any simple design okay and try to draw a symmetrical opposite side of that okay you can try a creative face like this as well if you want okay this is your next exercise this is called the upside down drawing okay so instead of you know in this exercise instead of observing your uh, subject straight okay just flip your subject like this okay take any line drawing simple line drawing like this okay and i recommend uh, for this exercise use a line drawing simple drawing okay as a reference okay turn it around like this okay and then try to draw okay choose subject like this okay 
flip it okay and try to draw it upside down this is your next exercise okay pure contour i already assigned this exercise to you okay so i think time is over so i think this exercise is enough for you begin so thank you very much guys and take me your leave thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you